Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this quick tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at the UI in 3D Studio Max. Okay? Uh, this is the basic setting for it. You'll end up getting a four panel view of the different viewports. You have top, front, left, and perspective. That technically is the perspective view. This is our move gizmo. It allows you to rotate around your scene. You can actually grab the the uh, ring and actually rotate it on an axis, which is good. Or again, you can just you know rotate around. You can actually do this in any of the scenes. You can actually tilt it in a, a particular direction. You know, you can just rotate it around. If you do it the front, you can rotate it around that way. But do keep in mind that. Uh, as these panels say, see this orthographic, it means there's no real depth information. So it doesn't it doesn't deal with it very well. You, you know, if you're going to look for, for depth, you need perspective. Anything that's at the top, the front, or the left, th those will be what's called orthogonal. There's no depth cue, no, no, no depth information. Only in the perspective do you get uh, that sort of feel if there's something there. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to go to the Create tab. You have a couple different tabs up here. You have the Create, you have the Modify, you have the Hierarchy, you have Motion, you have Display, and you have Utilities. Obviously, the Create is where you'd create your different objects. Uh, you can do uh, the Geometry, Actual Mesh. You can do Shapes, which will be uh, what curves in, in Maya. You can create Lights, Cameras, you have Helpers, you have Space Warps, and you have Systems. If you click this next one, it looks like a rainbow. This is modify. This is again what it says. It's, it's where you can modify your mesh. You can modify your vertices. You can add things, scale things, things like that. The hierarchy is where you can adjust the pivot of your particular object. You know, most objects will come with a center pivot point, so you can you can affect the pivot only. You can affect the object only. You can do a lot of things with that. Uh, for this, for the motion, it's not something we're going to uh, deal with at this point, and it's not something. Again, this is just where you would find it. You display again. That's one of those things. This is, will show you where you can actually hide certain categories uh, on your viewport if you needed to. And again, utilities is pretty much, pretty much what it says. These are the built-in utilities that you'd find in 3D Studio Max. Uh, they they come in handy. Some of them come in more handy than others. I use the claps a lot. I use the reset X form a lot, and then I use the resource collector. Resource collector is if you have a particular model that has particular textures, you can actually click this button, and it'll say, "Okay, where do you want to save it to?" And then you can uh, collect and copy the, all the bitmaps and textures that go with it, and you can put it into one particular file. You can also include the actual Max file. You can actually copy it, or you can move it. In this case, obviously, you should just be doing the copying. Let's just go for a quick create. I'm just going to create a sphere. I'm going to just click in our top view. And as you can see, it pulls out pulls it out in all the different views. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, viewport toggle. My shortcut is W. So I just hit W to uh, bring that up and to rotate. Uh, there are a couple different methods. Again, I, I have a shortcut that starts that off at least. So mine is V. But you can also use this gizmo. At any time, it just rotates around the model, etc. Okay, that just keeps it nice and simple. You have your different menus up here, and you have your your different uh, uh, some of the different modeling uh, or different suites within in 3D Studio Max. You have the graphite modeling tool, you have the freeform selection, object paint stuff like that. Again, if you're just looking at, at Max as modeling and such, a lot of times you're just going to be in the graphite modeling section more than anything else. You have a few uh, little menus up here. If you hold your mouse over I, any one of them without even clicking on it, it'll tell you what it is. This is select and link. This is break the link. This is like parroting and unparroting. This is the, the move, select and move. This is rotate. This is scale. Anytime you have a little tiny arrow in one of those corners, it means there's other selections there. So you can just left click and hold and I can do a uniform scale non-uniform scale and then the scale from a uh, it's a select and squash kind of scale I'm just going to click that back and go back to my uniform scale, that's the uniform scale uh, this is the pivots this is the the uh, center points 
If again, if you left click and hold, usually I'll, I'll go to this middle one. That way I'm scaling out from the pivot point. These are our snap tools. Now there is a little icon here that if you click and hold, you have in two and two and a half D and then three. Also, if you right click it, it'll bring up this little dialog box, the grid and snap settings. Now with the snaps, you can snap to your grid points. That means the grid points, as you can see on our grid, you can actually do it with the grid lines. If you'll notice, it's actually selecting on the lines now. See that? And I can slide in any direction. You can do all of these midpoint, center face, endpoint, tangents, blah, blah, blah. I tend to use vertex for the most part. And the options, you can use the move a the axis constraints, meaning if you click it in just the X or just the Y, it'll move it just in that particular um, mode. In this case, let me, let me get on the move. I, this, this is the transform gizmo in 3D Studio Max. It's just like the one in Maya. So I can just click and drag on the X and click and drag on, I'm sorry, on the Y. Let me rotate around a little bit and do that again. There we go on the Y and on the Z. Okay, there we go. Oops, I've actually got it snapped off. There you go. If you if you click off this axis axis constraint, you can still control the axis constraint on it, no problem. But once you turn that off, you can in fact move in in several different directions at once. It just depends on what you want to be able to do with that. Also, one of the things that that uh, 3D Studio Max should have but it's kind of hidden is the Axis Constraints tab. Now these are the default tabs that they set up for you, but you can add a, da a tab in here. To do that, all you have to do is find any of this gray area and just right click. And then here's this one here that says Axis Constraints. If you click on that, this is your Axis Constraints. This allows you to do X, Y, Z, uh, Z, X, depending on how you set up your coordinate system. I usually do mine X, Y, things like that. Of course, this actually would then kind of interfere with your viewport as you're trying to deal with things. The The fun thing is, is to dock this, we just have to left click and we're just going to drag it up till we look like we're intersecting that main piece and then just let go. It created the new dock and that's what, that when you restart 3D Studio Max, that will always be there for you from then on out, okay? So that's, that's a really fun thing to have. And here I am again moving in the X and Y. We have X and Y set. Here we have just in the Z. So it's good to have that. It's, it's something that I like to have set up. If by chance, I'm going to hit my toggle to go back to the, the, the four panel. If, for instance, you don't like this particular setup, there's different things you can do. You can just left click on that little plus right there and you can go to this configure viewports. Now mine is set up as the four panel, but you can see you have a number of different choices. You have the single panel, the two panels, vertical, two panels horizontal, two panels, tiny little space on top, bigger space on bottom, the reverse over here. You can have three panel vertical, flipping that over to the other three panel. Here's another three panel, three panel. Here's four panel, three small sides, one big one, and the reverse of that. So it's pretty much whatever you want to be able to do. I, I particularly like my four panels, so I like to leave them there. Also, a lot of times when you're modeling, uh, you want to know how many polygons you're working with, etc. And that's under statistics. So if you want to click statistics, this is where you can turn on your poly count, your tri count, your triangle count, edge count, vertex count, frames per second. I don't know anybody who ever uses frames per second. But I usually have the poly count on and then the vertex count on. I sometimes do the triangle count when I'm going to do a model between Max and Maya just to make sure they're all squared away. Also, then you want to make sure that if you're going to do this, you want to be in total and selection. That merely means as as you're working on a model, if you've got 20 different models in here, it'll show you what you've got selected, but it'll also show you, let me, oops, and I'm sorry, it didn't show it because I forgot to click something. You have to click this button here, show statistics in the active view, okay? So there we go. We're in our active view. If I click to here, all right, uh, it should have updated, and actually I'm surprised it didn't. Once you do it for one, it's supposed to do it for all. Uh, that's the first time I've ever actually seen something like that. That's really odd. But if I, again, if I had, this is right now it's showing us, I've got 120 uh, polygons, 120 tries. 
if I were to have a couple different models in here, it would have showed me total too. I could have like, you know, 2000 polys in here, but I've only got this particular one selected. So it's only going to show that particular uh, number and what we're dealing with, etc. If you don't like that up there, you can always go to configure viewports, turn off the statistics, you know. Uh, I, I use it if you're trying to hit a particular poly count. Sometimes when you're working on games like for mobile applications, you have to have a very, very, very low poly count on models. And it helps keep keep in mind with what, what you're trying to work with, you know, so you have an idea of how you're going to, you know, keep the poly counts down and where you can turn on and, and work angles and such on the particular model. Also, for this particular model, this, this sphere, it comes in red. It's just the default. 3D Studio Max will apply just default colors to everything you create. If you want to change that at any time, you just come over here to where it says Sphere 001. Click on this color bar, and you can change it to anything you want. Okay. So let's change it to blue. It's simple. Uh, you can turn on your wireframe by hitting F3. Okay, you can turn off your wireframe on the model by hitting F4. See, that just shows the wireframe on and off. So if you don't like it, you can just turn it off. If you don't want the grid on, on showing, just hit G. It's nice and simple. We'll hit F4 again. Selecting the model, you just have to click on it. That's really all I have to do. You can set up shortcuts for everything in 3D Studio Max. If you want to deselect, for me, I have a shortcut for that. So it's just D, or to select off. There'll be a lot of times when you're working with a bunch of different models, you, you want to be able to just go ahead and just hit D and you're out of it. So it's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, right now you have the ambient occlusion with the hardware shading on, and in our perspective. You can change a lot of stuff with this. You can change out, uh, not only your layout, you can change the, the statistics, but you can change how you want to turn around and have like, rent, what sort of rendering you want to have shown. Like, do you want to have a bounding box around your model? Do you want the wireframe? You want it flat? You want it faceted? Do you want it highlights? Rendering options, you can disable textures. There's a whole bunch of things within of this that you can turn around and play with to make your particular default. But that's just a very, very quick introduction into the UI in 3D Studio Max and what you can do with it. I hope that's been fun for you. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com, and thanks very much for watching.